financial statement feature in Microsoft Dynamics AX 2012 enables the building of custom reporting structures in order to comply with legal reporting requirements and international accounting standards. Financial statements typically include a balance sheet, an income statement, and statement of cash flows. And creating a financial statement in the most simplistic terms involves setting up rows such as accounts payable rows, taxes payable rows shown here, as well as a set of columns, for example, current year and prior year in this simple balance sheet. It also involves setting up a financial dimension set, which allows you to select which main accounts, dimensions, or combinations of the two can appear in the financial statement and in what order they should appear. Let's first take a look at the setup of financial dimension sets by going to General Ledger, Setup, Financial Dimensions, Financial Dimension Sets. This video is going to cover creating a basic financial statement using only the main accounts in our Contoso CEU chart of accounts, and therefore I'm going to use the ACC main account dimension set. You can see here that main account was selected from the available financial dimensions pane and included as a dimension focus. In addition to ACC on the left here, you can see that I have various dimension sets that combine dimensions with other dimensions and or main accounts. For example, I could create a departmental P&L using the department and account financial dimension set. For a deeper look at how combinations of financial dimensions are used in financial statements, please see the video titled Generating a Profit and Loss Statement by Dimension. Okay, so as soon as the dimension set is created, it is now possible to create row definitions used in the financial statement by navigating to General Ledger, Setup, Financial Statement, Row Definition. Let me expand this. And here is an example of a row definition for an income statement that has already been built using a main account focus. The depth field shows the number of row levels in the structure designer, eight in this example. To see the details of the row structure, click on the structure designer button. And now there are two approaches to building row definitions. The first is the bottom up approach in which you start with the calculations at the bottom of the financial statement and you build to the top using groups for calculations, which is how this financial statement was built. By clicking on the simulate button and I explode out the rows, I'm going to scroll up here, I can see that I have eight levels that I mentioned starting with the bottom line of earnings through the various groupings all the way up to the sales main account values. Now I'm going to build a very simple row definition for a profit and loss statement using the top down approach instead which is built the reverse way by going row by row from the top of the financial statement, say total sales, to the bottom net income net loss line of the financial statement. So I'm going to press the new button to create a new row definition. I'm going to give it a row definition name, we'll just call it PL, profit and loss. And over in the financial dimension set, I am going to select main account to restrict the rows to main accounts only. And then I'm going to click on the Structure Designer button. On the left, you will see different modes, Create, Edit, Delete, Copy, and Move, that all can be used to build row structures. And I'm going to create uh, a new row by clicking on Create. And I wanted to show you the different types here. So there are five types. Dimensions holds dimension values, so in my example, main account values. Group is used to group accounts on the financial statement. Structure is a row referring to another row. So for example, uh, when formatting the net income row in the earnings section of a balance sheet, you can map to the net income row on an income statement. Calculation calculates the values of one or more rows, such as a net earnings calculation. And finally, exception will print those row definitions not used in the printout in order to highlight certain exclusions. So I'm going to create my first row, which will be a group. As I mentioned, it will be called total sales. And I'm going to give it a row description of the same. And on the setup tab, I want to be sure to mark the box header and subtotal. I want a subtotal on total sales. 
and I'm going to save that row and I'm going to create a second row and this time it's going to be of type dimension because what I want to do is include all my sales accounts those values so my row name will be sales accounts row description and on the setup tab here in the value field is where I specify values for the main account in the value field you can build expressions using wildcards so for example 40 star in my database will give me a list of all the main accounts that begin with a 4 and a 0 so when I click simulate and add, if I'm going to add that to my row and I click simulate it's going to explode out what 40 star means and here you can see any dimension types have a yellow icon I also want to select the invert sign here to show sales which naturally appears a credit in the database as a positive value on my profit and loss statement okay so I'm going to unclick simulate go back to the general tab now in order to move to edit mode I can click on the edit button or I could also double click a row in the tree structure here now in order to add main accounts in addition to building expressions that I just showed you there are several other ways uh, you can move these accounts the first one is you can click a main account in the right pane and drag it to the tree structure on the left side of the form drag that you can double click to bring an account over or you can mark several main accounts by holding down the shift key in the right pane and drag them to the tree structure all right but because these are not sales accounts I'm just going to go ahead and highlight them and delete them I just wanted to show you different ways to move them to the tree so I'm going to delete all selected nodes say yes now for purposes of this simple demo I'm going to add another block of accounts for cost of goods sold and the first thing I want to do is create a new group so I'm going to call it cost of goods sold cogs it's of type group and on the setup tab again I'm going to mark header and subtotal and you'll notice there's a special report tab when you're in edit mode and it allows you uh, to select different print options my line break position I'm going to mark this as before because I want to add a line break before the cost of goods sold section and after my total sales section I'm going to add that row to my tree structure and I'm now going to add the dimension values or the account values to my cost of goods sold section so I'm going to call this cost of goods sold accounts and cogs accounts type dimension if I go to the setup tab now instead of using wildcards I can enter in a, a list or a range of accounts and in my database I'm going to add 500 100 dot dot 510240 for my list of cost of goods sold accounts I'll do a control s to save to my tree and notice that I say tree because I have the tree control checkbox marks which would allow uh, me to present the rows in a tree format but if I have that unmarked you'll see that the rows are presented in grid mode I'll turn that back on check searches for duplicates and marks the duplicate branch with a red X or red icon and I've already mentioned simulate but it also searches for duplicates and shows all the components of the row definition and the whole structure and it inserts rows as they appear in the financial statement now the final row I want to add is a calculation row for net income give it a row description and a row name I'm going to change the type to calculation and then on the setup tab you build arguments in a calculation expression and you can drag and drop which rows you want to use in the calculation so I'm going to do total sales I'm going to drag it down cost of goods sold drag it down and then I simply sum the two by clicking on sum up and it adds my calculation expression and I do a control s to save that 
On the Special Reports tab, again, I can set some special print options. I'm going to do bold and italics, and once again, I'm going to set the line break position before so I have a space between cost of goods sold and net income on my financial statement. I'm going to click Check and Simulate and verify that there's no errors or duplicates in my structure. And I see no red X's, so it looks good. So I'm going to close out of the Structure Designer form. And before I leave the Row Definition form, I wanted to point out a few of the buttons here at the top. So Copy can copy one Row Definition to another Row Definition. The Print button prints a report of the Row Definition. I can print the Definition, Simulation, or Simulation with Check. Where Use displays a list of the financial statements that uses the row definition. And Template, I can export templates to a file, import them, or transfer them from an XBRL taxonomy. So the next step in the financial statement creation is to format the columns of the financial statement. I'm going to close the row definition form and navigate to General Ledger, Setup, Financial Statement, financial statement. I'm going to click on New to create a new financial statement. I'm going to call it P&L, Profit and Loss. And I'm going to scroll over and select the primary dimension set, which as I said earlier, I'm going to restrict on main account. Primary dimension set is required. Secondary dimension set provides a more detailed statement for each main focus. So the secondary focus is optional and for purposes of this video is not applicable. And on the setup tab is where we select the row structure we just defined. So I'm going to select P&L again that will restrict which rows that I have set up to total sales and total cost of goods sold. And on, on the setup tab you can also specify your uh, print ranges. I'm going to actually skip zero so I don't display rows in my financial statements that are all zeros. Now on the lower part of the form is where you add the actual columns themselves. So I'm going to press add. And I'm going to add four columns to my uh, financial statement. The first one being account. The second one being current year amount. The third column being prior year amount. And I'm going to add a column for budget. Now you'll notice that every column has a column type. So for account, if I were to do the drop down, you can see, can see the full list of uh, column types here. For my account, I could choose to display the code itself for the main account or the definition name. And I'm going to select name. For current year amounts and prior year amounts, both of these types would be current. I want to show the current uh, balances for my main account, so I'm going to select current. And of course, budget, the column type would be budget. You can choose to print all rows, or you can choose not to print a, I'm sorry, a column on your financial statement. And then for the current uh, columns, I want to go to the setup tab, and here's where we actually specify the data interval code that we want to use. So I'm on the current year amount. I'm going to do a current year data interval. I'm going to go to the prior year, set up a prior year data interval code, and that is uh, previous year. On this tab, you'll also notice there's a factor field where you can display the report in thousands or millions. There's also a formatting tab which allows you to specify, again, separators, decimal thousands, uh, and the length of columns, for example. So I'm going to set this to 30. I'm going to do the same for my current year. I'm going to click on the formatting tab and change that to 30 as well. On the transactions tab, you can select company accounts to print data for other companies on a financial statement. So that would be useful if you are building a consolidated financial statement and want to have a separate column display for each individual company in the consolidation. 
Users can choose to include opening transactions, operating or what we'll call daily transactions, or closing transactions. And a column can be restricted by posting layer, so current operations tax or any combination of those. Uh, that's important because it enables right, the construction of reporting structures for producing financial statements for different generally accepted accounting principles, such as U.S. GAAP or IFRS reporting. And if you are formatting a budget column, so let me go back to overview, on the transactions tab, you can see here you can select the budget model, submodel, and what version of the budget, original or revised, you want to include in the column. Now you can move columns up and down. For the current column types, you can select and filter your transactions, and you can also remove columns. So if I wanted to delete a column, for example, you click on delete and just confirm that yes. Okay, so now we have completed setup of the column definitions. We've already done the row definitions. The final step is to print the financial statement. And I'm going to close out of the financial statement setup form. And we're going to navigate to reports, transactions, financial statement. And in the financial statement list, we're going to select the financial statement just created. And it defaults in with the settings that we already set up. So it's going to filter on main account. And here's our row definition, PL. And you're going to notice that the default output type is Microsoft Excel. But it is also possible to print financial statements in an XBRL format, as well as uh, export to produce an export file. When you select these options, you will see that there is a Save To tab. So if I click on Save To, I would navigate to the Excel file that I want to print to. So I select OK to print and generate the profit and loss statement. And here you can see our total sales accounts, our total cost of goods sold, and our net income. And with that concludes this video demonstration. Thank you.